This is an ABC News special report. Hi, everyone. I'm Diane Macedo. We're coming on the air with breaking news. The Supreme Court has just rejected a challenge to the Affordable Care Act for the third time. The court was asked to decide if the law's individual mandate was unconstitutional now that Congress made the penalty zero, and if so, whether the rest of the law can stand without it. But the justices have decided that the plaintiffs in this case had no standing to bring the case. The decision maintains health insurance for millions of Americans, effectively leaving in place the status quo. Constitutional attorney and ABC News contributor Kate Shaw is here now with more on this. Kate, how did the court come to this decision? Well, Diane, the idea of standing, which you mentioned, sounds dry, but is hugely important in general and in this case. So the idea here is just because you disagree with a law or you don't like a law, you can't go to court and bring a challenge to that law and have the court resolve it. And, you know, every challenge to a law has to be brought by a party with a concrete, concrete stake who is injured by a law. These individual plaintiffs who have these individual plaintiffs who have complained about this mandate, which no longer has a penalty attached to it, just don't have that kind of standing that permits a court to decide the merits of their case at all. So that's really the heart of this ruling. The Supreme Court, in a 7-2 opinion written by Justice Breyer, said the individuals who have come to us and the states who have come to us simply lack the constitutionally required standing, and so we can't decide the case at all. So essentially, when you dismiss a case on standing grounds, you leave the law intact in its entirety. So Obamacare lives to fight another day, having sent it off this third challenge, um, on the basis, again, that the plaintiffs who brought the challenge lack standing. All right, and let's bring in senior Washington reporter Devin Dwyer with a little bit more on this. Devin, what does this mean practically for health care in this country right now? Well, Dan, this effectively means the status quo is in place. 31 million Americans right now, a record, have health care coverage connected to Obamacare. All of that is preserved. 54 million Americans with pre-existing conditions uh, and receiving protections under Obamacare. A huge concern. All of that is still in place right now. There are still challenges to the health care law in the pipeline right now. Uh, so we will keep a close eye on those. But as uh, Kate Shaw just said, the third existential challenge to the law uh, has fallen in large part thanks to Chief Justice John Roberts and three of the conservatives joining with those liberals today, Diane. And senior national correspondent Terry Moran, what's the political impact of this decision? Well, this is a defeat, well, once again, for Republicans and conservatives, but they really want the issue uh, alive, that somehow the Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, was a tyrannical act because it forced people to buy health insurance. What the court says today is it does enforce. It does say you must have it, but there's no enforcement mechanism. The Republicans themselves reduced the penalty to zero. And in this country, you can't bring a case because you don't like a law. The law has to injure you. And if there's no way for the government to enforce the mandate, that you must buy health insurance, there's no case here. So the Supreme Court dodging this case uh, you know, also uh, awards victory to those who have health insurance through uh, the Affordable Care Act. But it, it, it really does, I think, put the nail in the coffin uh, of the Republican effort to zero out this act, to overturn the Affordable Care Act, because there is no more case without any penalty for uh, not buying health insurance. That's what the Supreme Court said. All right, Kate Shaw, quickly, could this pave the way for future challenges? You know, I, I think that Terry's right that the, the sort of existential challenges have been basically exhausted. Now, there may be challenges to dimensions of the law. There have been religious liberty objections to various aspects of the law, in particular the contraception mandate. Um, so, so I think it is possible there will be more. But I think that Terry is right that, you know, leg the legislature is where future battles about health care um, are likely to play out rather than the courts and the Supreme Court in particular. All right. And Devin, how do you see those playing out? Well, well, some of those federal uh, cases, Diane, are still underway right now. Uh, the, the, the most prominent among them dealing with uh, those popular provisions, guaranteed provisions, no cost care uh, for, for, for contraception and the like. Those will continue to play out. I think I agree with Kate Shaw. Uh, they're a bit of a long shot, but a huge relief, a huge win today for Obamacare. And certainly the White House uh, is breathing a sigh of relief as well, Diane. All right. Kate Shaw, Devin Dwyer, Terry Moran, thank you all again. The Supreme Court just rejected the latest challenge to the Affordable Care Act, leaving in place health care for millions of Americans. We will have additional updates on ABC News Live. And right now, we're going to return to your regular programming. Thanks for watching. This has been a special report from ABC News.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.